So today we got to hear from head coach Doug Peterson, and he had some interesting things to say. What is going on, everybody? I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Talk Podcast. If you are new to the channel and love talking Philly sports every single day, hit that subscribe button. Now, if you heard Doug Peterson's press conference, how he was talking about Monday pads practice, we doing some game situation, and more importantly, what he said about Greg Ward Jr., smash that like button. And oh, by the way, it helps this content and pushes it out to other Philly fans on the road to 5K. With all that being said, let's get into today's topic. I want to start this off by keying into what Doug Peterson said about Greg Ward Jr. But before we go into what he said about Greg Ward Jr., I want to run some tape on some of the plays that Greg Ward Jr. did down the stretch that were key for the Philadelphia Eagles and just the connection he built with Carson Wentz over a half a season. Actually, maybe a quarter of the season. Let's run the tape. Here, the Giants are running the cover three, so instead of Greg Ward slanting, he runs a seven-yard curl route, which allows him to catch the ball and avoid the contact. He does a great job avoiding the contact, not messing up the catch, and getting up the field. Matched up at the bottom of the screen against man coverage, Greg Ward Jr. is going to run a comeback route and beat his man to the ball. But what I love about this little play is Carson Wentz and Greg Ward's connection. Look at this. Carson is letting it rip, and Greg Ward Jr. has not even turned around yet. That's how you know right there they were on the same page down the stretch of the season. Here you got Greg Ward pointing out that Jack Rabbit's going to do something funny. And in this play, he ends up blitzing off the edge to get Carson. Carson does a great job avoiding that and getting the ball out to Greg Ward, who avoids a tackle and gets upfield for a nice game. Playing against the Washington football team, they decide to match a safety man-to-man -man against Greg Ward, and he runs a perfect dig route. He's going to run his route into the defender, lean into him to get leverage, and break it off at the top of the stem to get an easy completion. Now on this play, Carson gets pushed off his back foot and still completes it down the field. On this play, Washington is playing a cover three, so Greg Ward is just going to run a curl route and sit in the zone and make an easy completion for Carson Wentz. Here, you got Washington playing man coverage, and Greg Ward Jr. is going to run a slant route. Dallas Goddard is going to run a seam route, which is perfect because it picks Greg Ward's defender naturally, leaving him wide open to catch the ball and get upfield. Again, Washington is playing man, but y'all remember this play, the bang banger. Greg Ward Jr. is going to be the only one that runs to the left, with everybody going to the right. Josh Norman has to fight through a lot of commotion, leaving Greg Ward get a step. Now he does catch up, but Greg Ward gets a nice completion in the back of the end zone. Look at that replay. Give me that. He's not Julio Jones. He's not the X receiver we need or the guy who's going to beat you down the field. But if you get these type of guys, a la Deshaun Jackson, maybe a healthy Alshon Jeffrey down the road or J.J. Ortega-Whiteside becomes that John Hightower, Quez Watkins, who knows? But if you got these guys, our dominant tight end duo, Deshaun Jackson, Jalen Rager, and now you're running Greg Ward Jr., who is an ex-quarterback, who knows route running when it comes to where you want your receivers to be to catch certain passes and certain zone concepts and all that good stuff. I mean, that doesn't mean just because you're an ex-quarterback, you're a good receiver. You still got to be an athlete, but we've seen game by game, Greg Ward get better. And when people say he shouldn't make the team because if he makes the team, well, then our receivers are not that good. Maybe if you look at the practice squad player, Greg Ward, who came to the Eagles, yeah, if you can't beat him out, then what's wrong with you? But why can rookies who are drafted late and or undrafted become something in the NFL? And a guy like Greg Ward, just because he was on our practice squad, we could have made a mistake of not evaluating talent right. Because as the season progressed, Greg Ward Jr. started showing something, and defenses were watching him when it comes to our receivers. Now, they still had to account for Dallas Goddard, Zach Ertz, and Miles Sanders in the backfield, but when it came to receivers, they weren't really worried about Rob Davis, Deontay Burnett, J.J. Ortega-Whiteside. They were keen in on Greg Ward because he was that key guy down the stretch. Now, Deontay Burnett had a key catch. Rob Davis had a key catch, and same with J.J. Ortega-Whiteside, but our most consistent wide receiver was Greg Ward. 
Ward Jr. Now, you get some speed and some more talent around him, and defenses have just got to kind of let him go or throw a linebacker on him or a safety, he's going to be able to eat in the middle of the field, catching the ball, getting a little bit of yards after the catch, and being that guy. Now, you say, well, Quez Watkins could do it better. John Hightower can do it better. Some of these guys can do it better. A, if they can beat him in camp and get that spot, well, then it is what it is. I do got a little soft spot for Greg Ward Jr., but it's the best man available. Whoever's the best man in camp, in your locker room, on the field, should be on the field. Simple and plain. Now, you guys know I'm a big Quez Watkins guy, a huge Quez Watkins guy. If you're new to the channel, go back months ago. I predicted the Eagles trying to get this guy in the fifth or sixth round, and we got him, and I loved it. John Hightower grew on me as well. So I'm not opposed to getting these guys in, and we're going to need these rookie receivers, mainly Jalen Rager, to take a big step because we need help in that department. We don't know about J.J. Ortega Whiteside. We got to make sure Deshaun Jackson stays healthy. Who knows if Alshon returns to the Alshon I want him to? Because if he comes back like last year with lingering issues, rushing him back, he's still running with a piano on his back, then I really don't want him. But if we can get healthy Alshon, I'll take it. So when it's all said and done, I want to give Greg Warren Jr. the same opportunity we're going to give everybody else on this team. And if he makes it, well, then maybe he's showing something and stepping up. Because as we say, these rookies can get better. So can Greg Ward Jr. This is not the same Greg Ward who just made the practice squad a couple years ago. That guy should not be on a roster, but this guy should. When I look at these three guys and Greg Ward Jr., John Hightower, Quez Watkins, I think they could be the guys competing for a job when it comes down to the 53-man roster cuts. Now, I've been a guy saying keep as many wide receivers and cornerbacks as you can because we've had bad history in the past with cornerbacks going down, wide receivers going down, and with this COVID, who knows? I'd rather skimp on another position, but we got to keep wide receivers. And with Alshon being on the active pup list, he takes a spot. So if we go in with seven, with Marquise going leaving, we got our seven. But if we go in with six, somebody's going to have to leave this roster roster and I believe the people fighting for it will be Hightower, Quez Watkins, and Greg Ward Jr. And you don't want to let your two young boys go. That's why it might be an uphill battle for a guy like Greg Ward, but the connection he has with the quarterback is going to give him a little pass. But at the end of the day, we need to see these game situations that Doug Peterson was talking about so we can evaluate should John Hightower, Quez Watkins, or whoever pass Greg Ward Jr. on the depth chart. And if they do, they do. I want them to, but we got to see. Now, when it comes to the wide receivers, like I said, just keep as many as you can and rock out with it. But now let's transfer to what else Doug Peterson said. He said the team is looking good. He's feeling good. And this is where it gets a little crazy because we're going into game situations. We got the offense established, the defense established. And as we're going into game situations, the coaching staff is still trying to evaluate how to get 80 to 53. See, that's what the preseason is for. And that's why Doug Peterson said, without the preseason, we're really going to ramp up on these scrimmages, you know, taking less days off of practice. Monday, we put the pads on. We're going to use these last 30 days to really get this team to where it needs to be. But while you're installing the playbook and running game situations, what to do on this down, what to do in this situation, what to do in this situation, the players are trying to bring everything in. They're also looking at the coach like, hey, he's looking at me. I got to be on my P's and Q's because there's no preseason. And if I don't show up now, I might not make the 53-man roster. Now, these ain't guys like Deshaun Jackson, Miles Sanders, Boston Scott. And these guys, we're talking about the undrafted free agents, Michael Warren Jr., Adrian Killens, Messiah Bailey, Raekwon Williams on the defensive side of the ball, Graylin Arnold on the defensive side of the ball, the young undrafted free agents, the young rookie, Sean Bradley, Davion Taylor, maybe not to get cut, but to see where they fall on the depth chart. These guys got to prove it while learning the system in game situations only in practice, which it's not game speed. But we're going to try our best. The whole 32 teams are forced to do this. And if any team can pass the adversity that is thrown at them, it's the Philadelphia Eagles. 
With all that being said, I'm glad to see Doug Peterson is feeling good. I love the pressure he's putting on these guys in these last 30 days. We got to get as much game time, grass time, real time, scrimmage time as we can because the whole NFL is behind the eight ball, like I said. But teams like us who have a lot of moving parts on the defensive end, on the offensive end, even in the coaching staff with Doug Peterson, we're not as bad as the rest of the NFC East, but we still got some moving parts. Rich Gangnello, Marty morning way all this stuff it's time to get to work 30 something days until eagles football let's go on that note let me know your thoughts in the comment section like i said i don't just want greg ward jr to get a shot i want every player and every receiver to get the same shot to prove their worth but i do like the little bit of connection that greg ward jr and carson wentz got at the end of the season and with speed on the outside I believe Greg Ward Jr. could even be more reliable, if that makes sense. But let me know what you think about Doug Peterson's press conference and getting these guys up to speed. And let me know your full thoughts on Greg Ward Jr. Should we just keep seven and keep him? Or do you think he gets cut after Doug Peterson saying he's a leader, he's a guy, he's going to be in the rotation? Is that just coach talk? Or is that Doug Peterson staying by his word? Because he also said Mike Groh and Carson Walsh is going to be here. And the next day they were gone. I don't know. Sometimes coach talk can be coach talk. This time, it's really about to be over. You guys know what time it is. We out.